Before World War II, California was home to more than 30 thriving Japan towns, but they started to disappear and get gentrified after Japanese Americans were placed in internment camps. Today, only three Japan towns remain in California. Now there's an effort to revitalize the bustling Japan town that was once in the capital city. Our Devin Truby has the story. This is what Sacramento's Japantown looked like in 1940. It was a vibrant community located along 3rd, 5th, L, and O streets. It was a Miko Amy Kamakawa's Wong playground. I grew up right in Japantown, which is uh, on 4th Street. It was so safe, I used to run around all over. We used to play hide and seek till 9, 10 o'clock. But Japantown became a ghost town. Amiko remembers the exact moment the first tragedy struck. My brother was just about to buy a house. He went to see the house on Saturday, and he was going to sign the paper on Monday, and the war started on Sunday. So, of course, we didn't buy a house. Sunday, December 7th. Attack on Pearl Harbor, a surprise airstrike by the Japanese Navy against the United States Naval Base in Hawaii. The attack had a huge impact, especially for Japanese Americans in the United States. Just two months later, Japantown in Sacramento was cleared and residents were forced to go into internment camps. Kiyosato remembers this like it happened yesterday. 25217C was my number. I'll never forget it. It's not on here but it's in my, tattooed in my brain. Taken to the internment camp in Poston, Arizona. I just broke down and cried when that st train started to move. And I said, nobody's come to save us, nobody cares. What Keo remembers most is the heat, over 100 degrees and passing out. I thought I had died because Everybody was laid out on this cot, and I still wonder how many of us didn't wake up. And no privacy when using the restroom, no stalls, no separation by gender. They wore paper bags over their heads for a sense of privacy. At 100 years old. I still have PTSD from this, you know, toilet thing. How would Japantown change when you got back? Well, there was no Japan town. In those days, the first generation couldn't buy home property, so their sons or somebody bought property. After the war, Japan town in Sacramento was able to return, and the Buddhist church that sectioned off its gym played a big role by giving families a place to stay. And what made Japan town thrive is the fact that families lived there, our businesses were there. It was a day and night place. But then, for the second time, Japantown would be forced out of its own community, unable to own property and make repairs upon returning due to government-sponsored mortgage redlining policies that prohibited loans in racially integrated neighborhoods. Miriam remembers the issues her family faced when they had to move because of the redevelopment. And we were not allowed in this area. But all the city saw was a high concentration of people of color, who they considered too risky to invest in. The area was labeled a slum, blighted, which allowed the city to cut revenue to the area. It was bulldozed for the capital redevelopment project. A wrecking ball shattered many cultures, including Japantown, for the Capitol Mall, and the area we know today as Doko, and a freeway. They didn't have the gathering places to go to. Amiko says it was a loss of independence for her mother because she couldn't go to an English-speaking store by herself. Well, it was kind of sad because the older folks, naturally, uh, they, they didn't speak English. So naturally, uh, Japantown was perfect. You know, they had, we had grocery stores, we had banks. I'm here on 10th Street in the heart of relocated Japantown. Hundreds of businesses down to a handful, like Osaka-ya, trying to keep history alive. Historical remnants remain like the Wakanora sign, even though the restaurant is no longer here. 
Linda Nakatani and her family have been carrying on the Osakiya name since 1963. Originally on the corner of 10th, where you can still see their faded sign, they bought the historic Senator Fish Market. And Senator Fish retired that year, so my dad said, is it okay if we buy your Senator Fish? And that's what, how we ended up coming here in 1997. Keeping a Japantown storefront alive and well for over 60 years, passing on the tradition to her sons and even me for the day. Yeah, that one's really good. I'm pretty sure 95% <laughs> that they will take over. It is a lot of work. Besides the businesses on 10th and W, one of the only remaining buildings from Japantown is the Nisei Barber Shop in Veterans of Foreign Affairs Hall, which makes it the perfect home for the rebuild Japantown Sacramento group to meet. All of Japantown was gone, um, except for the Veterans Hall that we're standing in, in today. Kobe and Jamie Katanyagi started the movement to revitalize Sacramento's Japantown. It all started with Jamie researching their family history, then realizing they have nothing to show their children. Kobe's great-grandfather immigrated from Japan and owned a print shop in the heart of Japantown. Because my generation, we weren't really even taught anything about it. You know, um, it's not something that they really talked about. The group consists of prominent Japanese Americans in the community, like Sharon Ito, former ABC 10 anchor. And this is one of their monthly strategy meetings, the dream to reclaim the heart of Japantown, the real one capital, which is currently just a plot of grass. While the group wants to reincarnate Japantown on that land with restaurants and shops, they're also being realistic that it could be purchased and developed. We're looking at um, either, you know, a memorial for Japantown all the way to maybe partnering with the city or with a developer to, you know, bring in a cultural center, museum. Eighty years later, we asked the Katanyagis, why push to revitalize now? I think it's important now um, for many reasons. The history is almost gone. The survivors and the storytellers are almost gone. And I'm afraid that this history will be lost. That was our Devin Truby reporting. If you want to help the cause, the Rebuild Sacramento Japantown group has a Facebook page. They say everyone is welcome to join and help them rebuild the vibrant community. Head over to abc10.com for the details.